Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now September 23rd of 2021. Now, I think it's pretty safe to say that the future of the Star Wars franchise seems to be quite expensive, not just with their new books, novels, and comics, but also their new TV shows and their new movies and the like, and how a lot of fans are just getting ready for this new universe that's currently being put together by both Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, I am on Twitter at MikeZero1 if you guys want to go ahead and check me out on there. I do post a couple of entertaining things from time to time. Now, as of right now, a lot of fans are looking forward to shows like the Kenobi series, the Ahsoka Tano series, as well as The Mandalorian Season 3. Those are the top three right now. Now, of course, 2022 is going to be filled with new Star Wars TV shows. The Ahsoka series is slated for a 2023 release. Next year, of course, just for starters, we have Mando Season 3. We've got, of course, The Bad Batch Season 2 coming out as well. We also have the Kenobi and Andor series. That's four TV shows next year in 2022 just for starters. It could be even more than that. Now, as of right now, we do know that a lot of changes are happening behind the scenes over at Lucasfilm for a number of different reasons. We already know that Jon Favreau is going to be bringing back a ton of Star Wars Legends material into this new Disney canon. That's basically his overall plan. He wants to actually cherry pick a lot of you know content from Star Wars Legends from the 1990s and the 2000s. You know, it's pretty much vivid at this point that John Favreau, given that he did say that they will be borrowing aspects from the Thrawn trilogy and even Dark Empire, it just goes to show us that we are going to have a very interesting road throughout this entire Mandoverse, as a lot of fans like to call it. So with that being said, however, something really interesting is happening between Kathleen Kennedy and John Favreau behind the scenes. So, now that both Disney and Lucasfilm are developing their new Star Wars projects like Star Wars Ahsoka and even the Book of Boba Fett, Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni are now just getting started in developing the new universe that's going to come all together for the fandom. However, currently major changes are happening behind the scenes for the Star Wars franchise, all thanks to Jon and Dave. However, currently it's described that there has been a ton of drama and conflict between Lucasfilm's Kathleen Kennedy and Jon Favreau for the future of Star Wars and how it will all be handled. Lately, Jon Favreau made a plan to bring back a majority of Star Wars Legends content to come back to life that would feature a far better story for Luke Skywalker. This is said to actually involve Jon Favreau's plan in order to, of course, that's going to feature a far better story for Luke and other characters out there apart of what's going to be borrowed from Star Wars Legends, in order to retell Luke's life in greater depth, in order to also excite the fans about what's to come for his future across the galaxy. Kathleen Kennedy is said to be very unhappy with Jon Favreau's direction for the franchise and wants him to actually change course and step back from the Star Wars Legends material. However, Jon Favreau's plan are, of course, already locked in in place, as Kathleen Kennedy even tried to talk with the higher-ups over at Disney to prevent this major change in Star Wars from happening. Kathleen Kennedy is best described to have issues with Favreau since he will be holding on to the vision by George Lucas. Given that Favreau will also lend a hand in the already planned Star Wars Underworld series that is set to take, of course, Lucas's original idea for a Star Wars TV show in live action form on Coruscant, Kathleen Kennedy's belief is that using too much of George's vision poses a risk to Lucasfilm as a company and is doing everything in her power to prevent Favreau from using characters like Mara Jade, Luke, Mace Windu, and even more like Anakin Skywalker in future TV shows. Initially, Kathleen Kennedy only wanted Hayden Christensen to be involved with the Kenobi series strictly, and that was all. Now given that she realizes that Favreau is bringing him back for the Ahsoka series and other TV shows for a handful of important scenes, Kennedy disagrees with this approach and is already having conversations with Disney's higher-ups that using too much of Hayden as a main character could be a risk to the Ahsoka series that is being planned right now. Now thankfully the Disney higher-ups are currently in Jon Favreau's favor and that they believe that Hayden is a golden ticket to making Star Wars pretty much as respectful to the fans as a great start. Kennedy is described to be frustrated with Favreau about being very consistent with his approach and as well as expanding the entire universe rapidly. 
Kennedy believes that things are moving way too fast and that Favreau needs to slow down on his efforts with Star Wars and where it's all going. However, Bob Chapek disagrees and trusts in Favreau and that Star Wars will be very successful in the end. Now, about Chapek, all right, Chapek, I gotta say one thing about him is that when you compare him to Bob Iger, it is so easy to just come out and say it, that he is a lot better than Bob Iger and how he performed with Star Wars. The reason being is that Bob Iger was way too giving to Kathleen Kennedy. He was way too accepting of her approach to Star Wars, and we all see that. We already saw what George Lucas' ex-wife, Marsha, talked about Star Wars and her take on the franchise, and yes, it does give you a better window of realizing that it's not just the fans who are upset with the direction of the franchise, it's people who actually worked on the original trilogy. And this is a thing. This is exactly why Jon Favreau even came back, or came into Star Wars, I should say. You know, he used his contacts over at Disney when he worked on The Lion King. He squeezed himself into the Star Wars world and attempted to fix it. The main reason why he wanted to bring Luke back in The Mandalorian was to fix the mess left by Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi. And you know what? I gotta respect Favreau. That is a lot of, you know, time and effort that you gotta put on your shoulders because this is Star Wars. You know, you're working on multiple projects. This guy is dedicating his life to the entirety of this universe and how it's really going to evolve. As far as Kathleen Kennedy, all right, I'm not surprised by any of this, the fact that she has issues with Favreau in his approach to the universe. I mean, here you have Kathleen Kennedy, one that really backstabbed George Lucas. I mean, if you look at that 2013 interview, she promised George so many different things that were broken. And now you have a scenario where you kind of have Favreau kind of doing something similar because Favreau had also made an initial agreement with Kennedy about how some of the characters would be used. But later on, Favreau had a change in heart and is now catering more and more to the fans. And that's all done because Favreau actually requested all of this by the Disney higher-ups, and they are in his favor. They actually believe in him over Kathleen Kennedy, and that really does speak volumes. Now, I know that Favreau's not the president, quote-unquote, of Lucasfilm, but he does hold a lot of creative power, significant creative power, given that he recently got that major promotion a couple of months ago over at Lucasfilm, along with Dave Filoni. They basically, believe it or not, can do whatever they want now with Star Wars, for the most part. The business end of things, Kathleen Kennedy runs that, of course, the marketing and such. But Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni, believe it or not, can also tap into that. It's why the marketing of The Book of Boba Fett is going to be superior than The Mandalorian Season 1 and Season 2, is because Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau are dealing with the marketing strictly. Kathleen Kennedy is pretty much stepping back from all of that. So expect a very satisfying trailer, expect a lot of things to be revealed this October, as well as at, of course, Disney Plus Day on November 12th, where we are going to get a bigger first look at, of course, the Book of Boba Fett. So, like I said before, I think that a lot of fans are just really getting ready to see exactly what John and Dave have in store. They know that the Book of Boba Fett is pretty much going to be their test, if you will, on how this universe is really going to work with the fandom. So overall, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Let me know about all of this in the comments, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.